Whitby is our next stop. The fishing town of Whitby is a maze of alleyways and narrow streets which run down to the busy quayside, as you can see here. And it was from Whitby that Captain Cook set sail to make his great discoveries in the South Pacific. And from the bottom here, there's 199 steps which lead up to the parish church of St. Mary, whose churchyard on Whitby's East Cliff gave Bram Stoker the inspiration to write his world-famous book, Dracula. Here's our main site and visit for the day. This is Whitby Abbey. This was built in the year 657 by the Saxon king of Northumbria. He appointed Lady Hilda, who was a niece of Edwin, the first Christian king of Northumbria, as abbess. And this is the reason why this is called St. Hilda's Abbey. The double monastery of Benedictine monks and nuns was also home to the great Saxon poet Cadman. In 664, the abbey, built on the east cliff overlooking the Esk and town of Whitby, was the site of the Synod of Whitby, at which the Northumbrian Celtic Church was reconciled to Rome. In 867, the abbey fell to a Viking attack and was abandoned until 1078, when it was refounded by Regenifrith, a soldier monk, under the orders of his protector, the Norman William de Percy. The second monastery lasted until it was destroyed by Henry VIII in 1540. The abbey buildings fell into ruins and were mi mined for stone, but they remained a prominent landmark for sailors ever since. Another bit of history comes from the Colonial Rebellion of 1776, when some colonial sailor by the name of John Paul Jones shelled the harbour of Whitby. The fact that he was a local lad did not particularly endear him to the population, as you can imagine. After we visited this abbey, we went and had a grand meal of fresh fish and chips, and we took a brief tour of the area before we started on our road going south. But this was a magnificent day, blustery, cold, blowing up a gale, but what a magnificent view from the top.